There's no reason to shout, but the impossible is God's chance to work a miracle, a miracle, so just Until God says it's done. No, 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 no. It ain't over. Until God says it's over. Keep fighting until your victory is won.
Good evening. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right from where you are. Let's thank him for his goodness and his kindness towards us. And while I'm giving thanks, let me also thank the amazing and incredible uh, team of uh, ministers and uh, just servants, uh, workers here at this church. You've just seen a demonstration of how awesome they are. We had uh, difficulties on yesterday for noonday, and they went to work, and uh, we are back. And I just want to thank them so much for their due diligence to uh, make sure that we're doing our very best as a church in every way uh, to present uh, this gospel, to present instructions to, to you, our family members, and family members of our family. And so, again, uh, shout out to uh, all of them, admin, media, custodial, uh, trustees, uh, deacons, deaconess, uh, finance team, all of these, again, who continue to serve in ministry, uh, making sure uh, that uh, the church is still open and that we are doing our very best to do what God has called us to do. Uh, I know, again, you've enjoyed the musical selections uh, prior to starting our Bible study, so uh, let's do a shout out to DJ LA. That's DJ Larry Allen. So your next event, if you need to book somebody to, uh, uh, you know, handle the turntable for you, Larry Allen is your go-to guy. But again, we thank him um, for lining up the musical selections with where we're going uh, with these instructions. Again, on Tuesday, we're dealing with the secret to winning over worry. And then tonight, we want to begin talking about uh, encouraging words for discouraging times. Uh, it, it, it's a challenging time. It continues to be a challenging time. And everywhere we turn, everywhere we look, uh, there's evidence, fingerprints of discouragement. It's, I mean, it's just everywhere. And uh, how many of us were discouraged when we watched that, uh, I don't even want to call it a debate, uh, last evening, but again, but again, so everywhere you look, everywhere you turn, discouragement is staring back at you. And so we just thought that we would uh, take just a few moments to try to encourage uh, one another uh, with the word of God. And just before we move into tonight's discussion, again, continue to be prayerful as you um, um, uh, uh, practice these basic principles to keep yourself healthy and strong and of course others I want you to wash your hands wear your mask and of course practice social distancing uh, let's continue again to be disciplined uh, let's make sure uh, that uh, this uh, perhaps the worst of times is not us getting to us to the point where we're about to throw the towel in you no know, God is with us God is keeping us, God is going to sustain us, so let's do what we can do, and let's trust God for the impossible. So we want to begin tonight um, introducing, we want to lay the groundwork, so to speak, about discouragement. Um, we want to talk about, first of all, what it is. What, is, what is discouragement? And again, thanks to our media team, they're providing the handouts and whatnot for you. So you have that information. So what is discouragement? I guarantee you, if we can't give a definition, we can give a description. All of us have felt discouraged. And so it's to be without hope. Um, it is to uh, deprive or to be deprived of courage uh, as well as hope. Uh, being bombed out. Uh, having, uh, you have it there before you, having no expectation of a favorable outcome. And how many of us uh, have known discouragement? I know I've known discouragement any number of times, a variety of seasons and reasons, and so uh, none of us are immune to um, th this uh, emotion of discouragement. 
And and when you are discouraged, uh, it, it's almost impossible for you to encourage in terms with the same passion, uh, with the same conviction. Because think about this. When you are down in the dumps and you're trying to tell somebody else not to be down in the dumps, you know, it's, it's challenging. And so God has a way of allowing us to know discouragement. And then that gives birth to us having a testimony when our heads were bowed in sorrow's valley, the Lord lifted us. And so now we have a new song, we have a new story, and so we want to encourage those who are living uh, with discouragement, who are going through discouragement, to be encouraged. And so that, that, is, that gives us a definition, if you will, of discouragement. Again, without hope, deprived of courage. Uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to, uh, to face uh, certain situations. It's a challenge sometimes to even just get up out of the bed. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge sometimes to, uh, to say uh, the right thing. And so, uh, but then it's also, again, being bombed down. And then lastly, having no expectations of a favorable outcome. Sometimes we are without hope. We don't have a word of hope to give others because we're not feeling it. Interesting enough, this uh, statement of summation, the New Testament, it uses three Greek words to carry the idea of being disheartened, dispirited, or discouraged. Discouraged. So disheartened. Um, again, you know, you're, you, you're, it's, it's heartbreak. It's, um, it's, it's, it's feeling low. You know, you, I mean, you ever just felt low. Uh, there was not necessarily, in, you couldn't put your hand on anything that was per se hurting you or bothering you, but you just felt low. You know, sometimes it's kind of like it's a dark cloud following you. I mean, everywhere you go, it's just like it's a weightiness, it's a heaviness. So that gives us a sense of what it, what it, what it means to be disheartened. But then also dispirited. Is, I mean, it's almost like you have no get up and go. You have no uh. You have no pep in your step. You don't have a spring in your step. You're dispirited. You are on E. You are operating, and all you have left are fumes. So dispirited. And then, of course, we, we just mentioned discouraged. So, uh, but let's move to when are we discouraged? You ever felt like you were pinned down? You were boxed in. Uh, you were closed in. And uh, whenever we have those types of experiences, uh, that feeling, uh, sometimes it is the result of, and you can go ahead and put them up, we've experienced some type of setback. You ever had uh, something... Uh, you were you were taking a couple of steps forward and then something happens and it knocks you five steps backwards. I mean, you ever had something that happened to you that just knocked the wind out of you? I mean, it, it literally stopped you in your tracks. And so we've all experienced setbacks. And, and setbacks, you can't necessarily see them coming. So you can't hide from them. You, you, you can't go around them. Uh, all of these things happen sometimes. And so um, these setbacks, that's why we feel discouraged. But then we, we've, also, we've also known heartbreak. It is, it is interesting to me that uh, there is no physical pain as worse as heartbreak. I mean, you, when, when your heart has been broken, um, uh, it, it's not something that you just get over uh, a week or two. But if you have really known heartbreak, I mean, it, it happens 
with any, any number of relationships. We have biological relationships. We have spiritual relationships. And so sometimes when death um, has uh, evaded uh, our ranks or sometimes when sickness has evaded our ranks and we're not able to come together, we have, we have known heartbreak during this pandemic because we have not been able to touch each other. We have not been able to see each other. We have not been able to fellowship uh, one with another. And so we have experienced um, heartbreak uh, to some degree. We miss each other. Uh, we just miss everything about church uh, as we have known it. And so uh, many people have just, just given up on uh, the church because they really cannot see beyond um, what they have known to be church. They just can't see church being any other way. And so many people have given up on that. And they're just, they're just, they're just heartbroken that seemingly we'll never be able to come to church again. So many people are heartbreak, heartbroken with that. And then we have, we have letdowns. Letdowns. Uh, in that you were so pumped, you were so close, uh, you just knew uh, something was going to happen in your favor. And, and, and when the bottom fell out, uh, you, 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 just, you were just done. And so we've all had those letdowns. And so, 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 so th th these are situation that these are experiences that bring about discouragement okay well let's let's move to this third section and and uh, let us know if you have questions uh, please uh, also uh, drop your comments so that others can um, see your comments and be encouraged by your comments even share your testimonies uh, if at all possible but this third section, how, 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 how can discouragement affect us? What are the effects of, of uh, discouragement? Well, one of the reasons why we need to deal with discouragement because when we are discouraged, we can discourage others. We can become a source of discouragement. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse number 21. This is what... Uh, Paul was talking about when he's talking about families and households of faith. Listen to what he, how he admonished his fathers in that third chapter of Colossians, verse number 21. He says, fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. You know, there are times, and I can talk uh, um, about parents because I'm a parent, and sometimes as parents, you know, we have, we have pointed our children in the wrong direction by telling them about the right direction too often. And so sometimes we have provoked them. Sometimes we have nagged them. Sometimes we have talked at them instead of talking to them. Uh, sometimes um, bec because we are parents, we, we continue to look down at our children instead of look at our children. They're no longer toddlers, so we got to stop treating them like babies. Once they become adults, we no longer look down at them, but we look at them. We look to them. And if we're not careful, we won't make that shift. We won't make that leap. We won't take that giant step that yes, they will always be our children, but they're not our babies. They are adults. Uh, they are grown. They may not be gone, but they are grown. And so here Paul, again, he admonishes fathers not to provoke, not to provoke, not to provoke the children unless they become what? Discouraged. All right? Sometimes we're, we're telling them, to do the right thing so much until they get tired of hearing it. And so we, uh, uh, we, 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 we turn it. Instead of us, our words and the sound of our voice 
being a voice of encouragement, it becomes a voice of discouragement because they get tired of hearing. How many of us growing up got tired of, of their voice? Every time we turn around, they were telling us what we couldn't do. They were telling us where we couldn't go. They were telling us why we couldn't go. They were telling about uh, what they went through. And, and we just on and on and on. And so whenever they would get started, we'd say, oh, there they go. And so we had to sit and listen to that. And it was not always uh, a means of or a source of encouragement, but it literally discouraged us. So, so that's, that, that's, that's one of the dangers of not dealing with discouragement in a healthy fashion. We, we become the source of discouragement. But then we also look at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 4. Uh, verse, and this, this is a typo on my part, uh, should be 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1, and then also verse 16. So we'll make that correction. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses 1, and then verse 16. Listen to what uh, verse 1 uh, says. And here Paul is talking about ministry. Uh, and, and all believers are engaged in ministry. So listen to what Paul says. Therefore, having the, this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. And so, of course, we, we understand that the gifts that we have to be engaged in ministry, uh, God has shown mercy upon us as we are using these gifts. And so we got to be careful uh, when we sometimes fail in ministry that we don't see ourselves as failures at ministry. Uh, 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 people who are in ministry have low moments. When you think about what churches are going through during this pandemic, Many pastors and many uh, leaders, they have become disheartened because of how this pandemic has affected, impact the church. And so if we're not careful, we can become disheartened. We can disheartened. We can become, we can lose heart. But you have to remember now, okay, God did not call us to be, f to fail. He has called us to be successful. And so you got to remember the mercy factor that is a part of being engaged in ministry. And so what we don't want is that what, what we don't want to become is that we are bearers of bad news. That's that's what that's what we, we we mean here by saying we can become the source of discouragement. You you can because we're having a bad day, we're going through difficulties. Then all we talk about is what we're going through. And we become a source of discouragement. Then in Ephesians chapter 3, there's another word here. It's a word of warning. Um, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 13. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 13. Listen to what, what Paul says. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you which is your glory. Here again, how often have you and I uh, seen what others are going through and it has caused us to be discouraged? Uh, sometimes that happens again when parents see their children suffering or sometimes when children see their parents suffering or siblings suffering or someone we're close to suffering. And sometimes we're so discouraged by what they are going through okay, that it, we literally take on a disposition of discouragement. So here we have to deal with it. We, we have to deal with it, and we want to deal with it in healthy spiritual ways. Okay? So these are just several ways uh, discouragement uh, can affect us. And here is why prayer is so key. Oh, my goodness. We, we, y y we have to have uh, strong 
uh, prayer life. You got to have it. It's what Jesus mentioned in Luke chapter 18, verse number one. And he was uh, talking. He was about to tell a parable. And the, and the whole and the lesson of the parable was basically and he told them verse one of chapter 18 of Luke. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. You know, sometimes people uh, talk about prayer as a as a a last resort. No, it ought to be a first response. You know, some people say, well, I just I'm just going to pray about it. It's like, you know, that, you know, that's the last thing I have. I've tried everything else. So now let me just talk to the master. No, you need to talk to the master as soon as something happens while it is taking place. And, and don't stop talking to him about it. And so we ought to always pray. Uh, we ought to always throw ourselves uh, on the, the mercy of God, at the feet of God, total transparency, brutally honest and open uh, with God concerning where we are and what is taking place. And, and there again, you know, God, he always meets us where we are, not where we pretend to be. And so, so when you are discouraged, tell, tell, the, tell God all about it. He knows it, but, but tell him all about it. And here again, when we're discouraged, uh, sometimes uh, we could feel as if God has set us up to fail. Um, but as we've mentioned in days past, when you're discouraged, you can, you, can, you can question God as long as you don't call him into question. Okay, question him. Um, uh, be open again and be honest and about that. Uh, but but if you don't deal with discouragement in a healthy way, you'll find yourself getting mad at the only somebody who can help you through. So, again, it takes diligent prayer. Here's a statement of summation. It takes diligent prayer to live above discouragement. Okay, you got to stay with it. Persistent, passionate uh, uh, praying. Uh, it is something that we can do all of the time. Uh, some people are more concerned about the position they are in when they pray instead of just praying from their hearts. Don't worry about the positions. Life will put you in the position. Circumstances will put you in the position. You know, there are some times when, when, when you just, just walk around shaking your head, mm, mm, mm. Life has a way of doing it. Sometimes you're on your knees. Sometimes you're sitting. Sometimes you're holding yourself. Uh, sometimes your face is, is, is in your hands. I mean, so, so don't worry about that. Life has a way, and circumstances have a way of kind of posturing you in terms of the position. But you are to always pray. Pray from your heart. Well, do we have any questions so far? Do we have any? Okay. Do we have any comments we need to entertain? We're good? Okay. So let's move to this next category, and that is we've been talking about discouragement and all that. And so we're going to use as an antidote, we're going to take a look at how Nehemiah went through a difficult uh, season uh, as he led God's people into restoring and uh, re building uh, that uh, critical key place uh, in Jerusalem. And he had to deal with one wave of discouragement after the next. People turned on him. Uh, uh, people went against him. Uh, people were trying to set him up. Uh, people were taking the people and, and lying to them and trying to get them uh, to leave the work. I mean, he just went through, again, one uh, wave of discouragement after the next. And so we want to look at him and see how God used him uh, to inspire and encourage the people to continue uh, that work of rebuilding uh, that critical place uh, in Jerusalem. And so we're gonna, that's, that's what we're going to, to use again to to help us deal with the different aspects of discouragement now a couple of goals that we'd like 
uh, to establish for this series. Number one, we want to come to this place where we really understand uh, that discouragement is uh, perhaps the main weapon in Satan's arsenal. Discouragement. You and I have lost count of the number of times we have been discouraged. Uh, and it, it, it happens uh, in, in uh, different ways. It, it comes at us from the least expected individuals. I mean, and so he uses discouragement um, as a way to, to call us away from uh, what God has called us to. And again, he, he has a way of crushing our, our feelings uh, to, keep us, to keep us down. So we, wanna, we, 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 we want to see it as something that is serious. And of course, we know that discouragement is so serious that it can manifest um, physiological uh, responses in our bodies. You know, we, we can be so discouraged that, again, it takes a toll on our bodies. So we really, we really want to take, uh, take, take it uh, seriously. But then a second goal is to maintain close ties with a network of encouragement. Make sure, make sure that you, that you are surrounding yourself. You have close ties ties with a network of encouragement, a uh, prayer partner, uh, a Bible-believing uh, church, um, a part of a ministry uh, wherein you encourage um, one another. So uh, you, you, you're reading some good books. Uh, you, you, you're, you're watching some good uh, television shows. So again, make sure that you maintain this. So just like everywhere you look, evidence, fingerprints of discouragement, you want to make sure that, that you have uh, multiple resources of encouragement. Okay? So one more uh, goal, and then we'll entertain a question. Uh, here's another goal. We, we want to, to read... We want to recite and remember scripture as a source of encouragement. Do not try to go through discouragement with a closed Bible. You need to keep your word with you. You need to keep your word on you. You need to know where to turn, where to go to for our words uh, that will combat, that will buffet uh, discouragement, all right? So read, recite, and remember Scripture, and I'm going to tell you how we're going to do that later. We'll pause right now. We got a question or a comment? Yes. Okay, okay, let me see if I can... Uh, condense that. How, how can we uh, get to a place where we're comfortable being transparent with one another? I'll deal with the first part of that question. Now, great question. Thank you so much. We have had, as individuals, we have had difficulty with transparency ever since the fall. You remember prior to Adam and Eve disobeying God, they had open, unlimited fellowship with God. But once they disobeyed God, once they transgressed, then this same God that they look forward to seeing and being with, they hid from him. And ever since then, people have been hiding from God are trying to hide from God. Even with people we love, even with people we've had relationships for a long time, listen, transparency is something you have to continue to work on. It is not anything that takes place over 
night. So I would encourage McKenzie. I would encourage uh, each of us. You, you, if you've got a couple of people in your life where you can be totally transparent with, you're blessed. So work with small groups, a couple of people, a different type of transparency. One type of transparency may be with uh, like romantic relationships. There's somebody you can talk to about your relationships. Another transparency uh, uh, individual may be someone you can you trust and you can talk to about your career. You're making the right choices for your career. Uh, another area could be uh, your spirituality, uh, where you where you you need to be told the truth, uh, even if you don't want to hear it. And and you 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 need to to have people in your life who won't allow you to put God at on your list somewhere. Instead of God being the list. And you got to have, again, so you can have different pockets of, of, of relationships where you can be transparent. And, and so if that will help us with the back end of your question, I believe, that the more we experience transparency with, with someone, then we make ourselves available to be so that we can perhaps be transparent for somebody else. So it's a slow process. Uh, one of the blessings uh, of this church is God has provided, uh, has made this church conducive to, to tight, good uh, bonding relationships. We, we, we literally like each other. And, and we demonstrate we like each other is because prior to worship, we're hanging out together. We're together during worship, and then when worship is over, we have to cut lights out and put people out of the church. And, and again, we enjoy one another because God has provided, God has made this uh, uh, environment conducive to, to, to fellowship, and fellowship is important. So hopefully that speaks to uh, your question, McKenzie. If, if not, you know how to get me, McKenzie. All right, any other questions? All right, great question. Thank you so much. And hopefully, again, ask your questions because uh, that, that may help and bless others. All right, so thank you so very much. So we get to um, how, how we're going to uh, implement the uh, read, recite, and remember scripture. I'm going to give you a word of encouragement for every day between these sessions. So that whenever you are tempted to, to be discouraged or to be overwhelmed by discouragement, I'm going to give you a word. You're going to have a word a day. Okay? So let me give you uh, these words, these passages. I'm not going to read them. I've, I've already read through them. They, they're going to work for you. Here are the passages. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And I'll repeat, repeat them. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3. Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3. Second Thessalonians, just abbreviate, Thes, T-H-E-S-S, chapter 3, verse 13. Second Thes, chapter 3, verse 13. Galatians 6, verse 9. Galatians 6, verse 9. Matthew again, chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, 28. And Psalm 23, verse 1. One more time. Matthew 16, 18. Psalm 46, 1 through 3. 2 Thess, 3, 13. Galatians 6, 9. Matthew eleven twenty eight, Psalm twenty three one. Now let me talk to you about the application piece. Again, with these words, you want to do three things. Number one, you want to read the word. You want to read it out loud. Bef before the word is in you, you got to hear it. You got to be hearers of the word. Word was meant 
oral. It was meant to be spoken. You got to hear the word, okay? Read out loud, okay? So you want to read the word so you can hear it, okay? Then you want to think about the word. Turn it over in your mind. Wrestle with it, okay? You want to think about the word you just heard. And then number three, three, you want to memorize the word. Okay? You want to read it, think about it, and memorize it. Don't reverse this order. Don't try to memorize what is not in you. Okay? Don't try to memorize what you've only heard a couple of times. Okay? Read that word out loud several times. You're hearing it. Then you want to think about that word again, turning it over, okay, reading it slowly, thinking about each word, and then number three, ultimately you want to memorize it, okay. Now, you want to memorize it because when you memorize scripture, it's almost like you memorize names, you memorize songs, you memorize lines in movies. You know why? is because in some way, each of that has impacted your life in some way. It is important to you. It matters in some way. And so you've heard it enough, uh, any number of times, and so you're, you're able to recall it. Okay, well, we're moving on up. All right, so we've had enough. I mean, we, we can go there, okay? All right, so, so that's, that's what you want to do with these passages, okay? And lastly, this statement of summation, when discouragement comes, start at the top. Don't try to, to, to get out of it from underneath it. To, don't try to get it off you uh, uh, by yourself. No, go to God. Run to this God. Go to his word uh, immediately. So you have these passages of scripture. So again, you this the, I want you to be these to be your go-tos uh, every time you you feel discouragement come and read it, recite it any any number of times a day. Take it with you all day. All right. Let me pause here if we got any questions before we wrap up. All right. Okay. So this is where we're going uh, for about we'll have about three to five um, sessions. Um, for, for, for discouragement, and then I also want to encourage you to participate in, on Tuesday, on uh, noonday, because we're dealing with worry there, and we're using the same format. So, um, so we have two, two Bible studies going on, and I really wanted us to, um, to um, uh, be a bit more, um, uh, I wanted to give something that was more personable, uh, I wanted to be more personable, and I wanted to be personal so that it can kind of uh, equip us uh, not only for these times, but even in the days and months to come. So, prayer call tomorrow morning, uh, 6.30 a.m. Reach out and uh, encourage somebody and tell them about the prayer call. So, you have a good night. Be safe. Love you much. Be encouraged. Enjoy DJLA.